Hello and welcome to Who Is Best, a show where I, Low Claudine, take games that give you choices and rate those choices in a tier list. Today we'll be looking at the members of Class 7 and see how they stack up in the final volume of Cold Steel's series. This was not easy. Like I said in part 1, I try to avoid newer games because of the lack of information out there. I have spent an outrageous amount of time pouring over Class 7 and will now present my best effort at creating a tier list. Some factors that went into this are important to understand. First, the break and delay strategy has been severely nerfed. This is a good thing because it's let other strategies come to light. That being said, Art's damage is off the charts. There is no better damage dealer than a caster. Yes. Even everyone's favorite blue-haired swordsman can't match Art's damage at the end of the day. But damage isn't everything. I've considered support skills, brave orders, fixed quartz slots, stats, and accessibility, and about a million other things. So buckle up because today we learn who is best in Trails of Cold Steel 4. Spoiler warning for the sh** here. Skip ahead to the time on the screen if you don't want the ending of Trails of Cold Steel 3 ruined for you. The only member of the sh tier is Milliam. She is the worst member of Class 7 because, well, she's not there. I know this is cheating, but I wanted to make sure we covered all of Class 7. The Low Tier The Low Tier has two members who suffer the same issue. I like to call it, can't live up to Reen's shadow effect. First is Eusis, who is mostly built as a support mage. When stacked up to Elisa, Elliot, or Machias, he is already lacking. But when you consider that Reen does everything he does just better, well, you have a low tier member. Even his greatest attribute, Platinum Shield, can become obsolete when Mobius is fully upgraded. Honestly, he hasn't changed much since Trails 3, but maybe that's the problem. The final member of the low tier is Crow. Now again, Crow is not bad, but when compared to Reen, a character that is similar in usefulness but outpaces Crow by a mile, he just can't stack up. I suppose you could have both of them on your team, but at the end game, you'd probably want to make room for a character who brings a different usefulness to the table. The mid tier. Elliot is a good support character, though surprisingly, his ATS stat is fairly low in comparison. Muse, Emma, and even Elisa beat him out in casting potential. Elliot is again overshadowed by other support characters and other casters, but that doesn't mean he's useless. If you're having trouble getting through the game, his S-Craft and Brave Order can come in clutch as they make your party incredibly hard to kill. Kurt is our first victim of severe nerfing. In Trails 3, he is a key member to the break and delay strat. But unfortunately, his Brave Order and Crafts have been nerfed, knocking him down a few notches. He's still a very viable character, but due to the new circumstances, he is a middle-of-the-road choice for an endgame team. Elisa is one of the better support characters. She has a hyper-focused pierce attack that can crit pretty regularly, an above-average ATS stat for casting and still holds one of the better abilities in the game, Heavenly Gift, which grants HP and CP regain as well as insight. The issue here is that her support isn't as crucial as it has been in previous games. She doesn't quite fit the niche she has had in the series thus far. Elisa is still an ideal Mobius user, but overall she isn't crucial to your endgame team. Now I know many of you consistently disagree with me as to Lara's placement so far in these lists. She's been in the low or mid tier throughout the series, and I'll attempt to explain my reasoning one last time. Lara serves a single purpose, physical damage. She literally has no other use whatsoever. If you have a team built around supporting her, she can potentially one-hit many bosses. But unlike a caster powerhouse like Musei or Emma, if for whatever reason you are unable to take advantage of her raw power in battle, she becomes basically useless. The Lara team strat has been a consistent endgame team since the beginning. It's a great strategy, but I would argue that it has never been the best endgame strategy. Back in Trails 1 and 2, Fee's evasion was unique and useful enough to break the entire game. That hasn't changed necessarily here, but high evasion is much more common to come by. And like Lara, Fee's single usefulness is overshadowed by characters with multiple uses. 
She's a solid team member, but comparing her to a character like Sarah, who has slightly less evasion aptitude, but a host of other qualities that elevate her, Fee's placement at the top of the mid-tier starts to make a whole lot more sense. The Top Tier The top tier is full of characters who fill multiple roles better than most who fill just one. The first of this is Altina. Altina in Trails 3 suffered from insane speed deficiency. She was so slow that all their qualities became obsolete. Overall, she has gotten a stat boost across the board and her Brave Order remains one of the best in the game. She has high ATS, making her a useful caster as well as a Mobius user. Overall, she is probably one of the most improved characters from the previous title. Next up on the top tier is Yuna. Yuna was absolutely broken in Trails 3. In fact, I probably should have put her in the god tier if I'm being honest. But Sledgehammer has been nerfed to a nearly unrecognizable level. Now with her usefulness changing from Trails 3, why is she still in the top tier? Well it's because she traded breaking enemies for excelling at everything else. Other than Sarah, Yuna is one of the most well-rounded characters in the game. She has amazing stats, awesome crafts including one that accelerates the party, and another that can fill the BP gauge. Yuna is a no-brainer for any endgame team. What Lara lacks in versatility, Ash more than makes up for. Ash is a powerhouse with an absolutely broken Brave Order that increases critical as well as buffs party attack power. Lara benefits highly from being paired with him. He has a link ability that heals his own CP and crafts that give him almost everything a player would need. Ash is a huge step up from his Trell's 3 counterpart. Machias is the single best supporting character in Trells 4. He's been consistently good in every installment in the series. His Brave Order is a better version of Kurtz, with cheap S crafts that can put multiple status ailments and delay on the enemy. Ask any veteran in the series what is key in battle, and they would say turn order. He and Yuna's ability to accelerate the party is pivotal to this and is key in having a game breaking team. The final member of the top tier is Musei. So I got a lot of comments saying that people actually love this character and that makes me happy. Musei is awesome, both in plot and battle. Her ATS is off the charts and she can be built to absolutely demolish enemies. What Musei lacks is useful crafts and S crafts. Her Brave Order is great and can come in handy with the Chrono Strat and using Lost Arts, but she is just barely edged out of the God Tier because of this. The God Tier Sarah, 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 Sarah The developers thought they had nerfed the game, but despite all the changes, Sarah continues to be broken. Her stats overall are better than anyone else's. She has amazing strength, ATS, and evasion, as well as range and superb crafts. Her Brave Order, despite the break system being nerfed, is fantastic. She fits every role perfectly and can fill in the gaps in any final team. It took four games, but Gaius has finally come to himself. Honestly, when considering the story, this actually makes a lot of sense. Gaius is the purveyor of what the community likes to call the not your turn strategy. He has the single best S craft in the series, which despite severe nerfs to everything else, has been untouched. He can delay any enemy, including bosses, ignoring any resistances they may have. His crafts are CP cheap. Using him correctly will ensure that your enemies never have a chance to attack, period. Emma. What can I say about Emma that hasn't been said before? She is the single best caster in the game. Her arts damage is uncomparable to everyone except for Musei. But beyond this, her S craft is just plain broken. Complete invulnerability times two on a character like this is mind blowing. Seriously, time things right and Emma will both be your best attacker and defender. I will say one thing, her romance with Reen has been incredibly fun especially their heart-to-heart -heart moments in Trails 4. But the climax was disappointing, to say the least. Anyway, moving on. Reen is the best character in the game. There is no contest at all. Divine Song breaks this game completely. No cast time plus the absolute broken nature of arts. Yeah, there is just nothing that compares at all. He also has amazing crafts, S-craft, and stats. 
that is enough, Reen receives a host of broken items from completing bonds with characters. These range from an absolutely ridiculous evasion buff to complete immunity to ailments. His ogre power has been nerfed, but this makes absolutely no difference. Reen is the perfect example of a god tier character. The Trails of Cold Steel series is by far one of the best examples of passionate, focused, and engaged game design. I can't emphasize enough how much I have enjoyed this series, and I will continue to play the previous titles as well as anything published in the future by them. Let me know your endgame team, and be sure to like, share, and subscribe, and I'll see you all later.